Hi. <laughs> We're starting to do something different this weekend. This is uh, Sunday Short Stories, and a few weeks back I uh, sent out a message just saying, uh, anybody have any suggestions or subjects or, or questions they might want to ask me about music, food, my travels, uh, what's going on in, 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 uh, in East Bay Soul land. Uh, you know, so here comes the first one. I'm going to do a um, question from a, a good friend and a true funk soldier up in Danville, California. His name is Dan Simpson. And Dan wrote in quite a few questions. So we're going to try to order, uh, answer as many as we can. There was one that I really was drawn to. Um, Dan wrote, <clears throat> Who are three music heroes you wish you would have, have had a chance to spend a day with but never got the opportunity? What is it you most admire about them? Well, you know, there's a lot of people I wish that I could have worked with uh, just because the opportunity never arose or they're no longer with us. But I can tell you, for one, it was Nelson Riddle, the great arranger who did most of the arrangements for Frank Sinatra and several other people over his career. But it, he really was a big influence for me. I. I've really studied his work and, and his work with uh, big bands with strings. I always dug that. And, you, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding, the, the, the work of art, the body of work that he did for, for just Frank Sinatra is pretty awesome. Uh, I would have loved him to, you know, be a fly on the wall when he was uh, uh, arranging or even conducting a capital A, which is a studio I work in often. And that's kind of a cool thing because when you walk down the hallway to, to in, in, when you're in the Capitol building in Hollywood. You walk into this room that, uh, first of all, the hallway is lined with pictures of Bobby Darin, Nat King Cole, uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Judy Garland, and then you walk into Studio A, and that's where all these singers recorded, and that's where the, the recordings were made. And they were done live in those days. You know, there were no overdubs. And uh, uh, so it was really an exciting you know, fly by the seat of your pants, and that, that stuff always appeals to me. Um, I've done a live album with Tower of Power called Direct, and it was with Sheffield Labs, and we had to record live, and it's pretty tense, you know, and, and to make matters even worse, when we did this session, we had to record the whole side, went direct to vinyl, and if, if, the, if the booth messed up, we had to stop. If we messed up, well, we would stop. But you want to make it as perfect as you can. But um, that's the kind of, of, of exciting uh, recording technique of doing it live. And, and he was a great, Nelson Riddle was a great conductor. And uh, uh, so that's one person that I would really, really like to have worked with and met and, and studied with. Of course, <clears throat> any of the Beatles. Uh, I've had uh, the great pleasure of working with Sir George Martin uh, with, uh, on a real kind of funny uh, musical film called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band and it had the Bee Gees in it, Peter Frampton, uh, and uh, Tower Power Horn Section. We did the, the horns for that. <clears throat> and uh, working with uh, George Martin was really a delight. But I've, I've never worked with the... With the, the the Beatles. I met George, but never we've never never got to work with any of them. So any any of the four guys would have been a real pleasure. Um, you know, how can I say Frank Sinatra? I mean, an iconic iconic musical symbol in the world today, still long after he's gone. I I, I think I dig the whole picture. I mean, the lifestyle that. You know, the 60s and Vegas and, and all that stuff. And then the 50s and the 40s when it was the Bobby Sox. I mean, the Bobby Sox. Was, I mean, that was like the first teen idol. I mean, that was before Elvis, you know. So uh, that's an amazing, amazing career uh, uh, Frank Sinatra had. And I, I think that uh, he surrounded himself with such great musicians. And like I said about Nelson Riddle, um, they recorded live. I mean, Frank Sinatra, literally, I've read things. He stood in the middle of the room and sang with the whole band, the whole orchestra around him. You know, and, and everybody had to get the part right. And they say that Frank 
um, was the most rehearsed guy in the room. He didn't make mistakes, and, and he didn't suffer uh, mistakes lightly. So, you know, he was a taskmaster, but once again, uh, iconic musical person that I really, really would have loved to have worked with.